Fergio's Family Restaurants. Uh, Carlos, did I butcher your last name? No, I think you, you did great, Larry. <laughs> Thank you. I studied a studied little, little bit of uh, Spanish, so every now and then it comes in handy. As I mentioned, he is the creator of the franchise, Sergio's Fresh Cuban Cafe. Carlos, I am in California where the governor just did a deal to increase the minimum wage to $15. What kind of uh, impact does that have on, on people like you? I know you're not well, in California, but assuming your, your, your minimum wage went up to that level, what would happen? Yeah, so what we did here in Florida was we, we, we had a vote, right? It went out to the people, and we actually mm -hmm. increased minimum wage based on CPI index, but it's a very slow growth. What, if, you, if you have government just coming in and, and deciding on a minimum wage just as $15 an hour, think about it. If the minimum person coming in, which, by the way, minimum wage is used as – someone to come in and to use them to train them, see if they actually have the passion for your business, see if they have right. the skill set, see how long it takes to train. Imagine the other people. They're not going to get paid $15 an hour. They're going to want 20 25 So what happens is, is that the consumer in the end is going to be the one that's going to have to pay for it. And a lot of times um, it takes a long time for consumers to react to higher prices. So unfortunately, many businesses eventually go out of business because they can't compete or they don't have – they're not big businesses that can maybe – adjust or or on on these regulations and that's what happens a lot of times is you know you have politicians who who think they they have this great idea to implement that helps uh the public but in fact it, it hurts the public and it actually will hurt um small businesses um, primarily even more a uh, greater effect than even big business carlos i think this is probably because most uh politicians have never, never even run a lemonade stand, let alone run a real business. My, my mom and my dad had a small cafe near an area of L.A., Carlos, called uh, Pico Union. And whenever Congress, with their infinite wisdom, would, would increase minimum wage, it would have an effect. I would watch them at the dinner table decide they're not going to hire a dishwasher, which would have been a really big deal for them because the minimum wage went up. So some guy who otherwise would have had a job as a dishwasher does not realize he doesn't have a job as, as a dishwasher. But the people who got a higher minimum wage are happy that they did, not really understanding the real impact of this. Absolutely. You know, if you never run – a business before or a small business before you really don't know what it takes to, to to run a business and so for example what most small businesses right now are doing are thinking how do we get everyone on the same page to focus on hitting right. goals whether it's sales food costs payroll goals and then you want to incentivize those people based on performances and give them money so imagine we had a world where we can actually say hey let's Let's figure out whatever the minimum wage is. Let's, let, let's, let's figure out how we can pay people a certain wage, right, based on what, what, what's needed in the economy. But let's incentivize them based on performance. You know what's going to happen? You're going to have better customer service. You're going to have better people align themselves with the business. Businesses will grow. Businesses won't close because everyone's going to have a passion towards a goal. And, then, and that's what really what small businesses and big businesses will try to focus on is how do we hit goals so we can pay people more? Because they cost a lot of money on turnover, but, small, but most politicians never know that because they just think, hey, let's just throw out a number. Let me get elected. Let me get some more funding for, 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 so I can stay in office. And, and they'll never come back to the private sector to really see how hard it is to make money in America. Carlos Gazetilla is my guest. He's creator of the franchise Sergio's Fresh Cuban Cafe. Uh, Sergio's has over 500 employees uh, and a lot of locations throughout southern uh, southern Florida. Uh, Carlos, let me give you an example of just the, the height of hypocrisy. Uh, in California, back in 1995, that organization called ACORN came out here to gather signatures to put a ballot initiative that would increase the minimum wage. They went to court, and they filed a brief to exempt ACORN from California's current minimum wage requirements. And here's what the brief said. I'm not making this up, Carlos. Quote, the more ACORN must pay each individual outreach worker to gather signatures because of minimum wage, the fewer outreach workers it will be able to hire, end of quote. Can you believe they had the nerve to say that? Well, you know, Larry, let me give you another thing. This, is, you, 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 this, this will blow your mind. So one of the big things that we're talking about with Bring Small Business Back is overregulation. Um, mm -hmm. And majority of the business are talking about how this threatens the viability of their business. The Labor Department right now, if you ask them for an advisory opinion on following rules by the Labor Department, think about this, that they have to enforce, they will not put anything in writing since this administration has come into office. Think about the hypocrisy that you are as a small business owner 
are asking a question and you cannot put it in writing. And, and, and then you've got to ask yourself, why would the Labor Department not put anything in writing when you ask them an opinion? And it's about control. It's about power. Mm -hmm. The more mm -hmm. that they don't tell you how to follow the game and rules, the better of a hammer they have later on in the future to go against you. It also is a policy that creates disincentivizes growth. Because if you don't know how to play the game or, or, or making sure you're doing things right and rely on, on, on attorneys, you know, who's really benefiting? Is, is, is this the, the American people, or is this a bunch of lawyers that are benefiting from not being able to discuss and put in writing your own regulations that you're supposed to follow? You know, we continue to have more complexity with the Affordable Care Act. It's created a lot of costs in small businesses. The National Labor uh, Relations Board wants to continue to overstep its authority to make it more expensive for franchisors to be liable for franchisees. I always, when I laugh when I hear this, because I say sooner or later the landlords are going to be liable for franchisees' labor decisions as well, because after all, people who are landlords make more money than franchisors on the royalty fees. It, it comes about, talks, we have to start thinking about accountability in, in, in our economy and, and when we do these laws, and overregulation continues to be something that threatens our viability of our business. I'm talking to Carlos Gazatia. He is the president of Sergio's Family Business. Uh, they have a number of locations throughout uh, South Florida. Carlos, later on in the program, I'm going to have on an, an economist. We're going to talk about this so-called recovery. Uh, this is the worst recovery in terms of job, uh, in terms of uh, GDP growth, uh, and I would, uh, would argue even job creation, since you really can't trust the uh, the official rate because so many people have just given up and are not counted. This is the worst recovery by those standards uh, that that we've had in our memory. And for the first time since this measurement has been uh, taken, there are more businesses that are ending than are being being uh, started for the first time. Well, you, you have a couple issues there, right? So we talk about lack lack of access to capital. So the financial crisis, um, most middle America remembers that the biggest takeaway that came out of that was that their banks were too big to fail, right, and there was no accountability right. on the loans, right? So we talked about accountability, right. and you had the Dodd-Frank trying to focus on that. But it also created a bad consequence, too. Banks are bigger than ever. Small banks are fewer than ever. It, it, it's amazing what that has done is provided less capital for entrepreneurs to try to start their own business. And that's one of the things you're seeing. Then you've got to talk about overtaxation. We, we've known for decades we continue to have bad tax policies in the United States. Currently, right now, we're the highest among any developed nation. So how are we going to compete worldwide if our taxes are so high? Which is why you see, you know, everyone's so upset these days. Why is everyone so upset? You've got to think about it. And you say, well, if, if entrepreneurs, if you can't have the desire or the willing opportunity to open up a small business and try to – try to do the American dream, and you're continually getting pushback saying it can't happen because they're not going to give you capital. It can't happen because the tax code is so complex that it's making it harder and harder for you to make money. People eventually give up, and that's what you're seeing in, in, in the labor department, I mean the labor force right now. Carlos Gazzotti is my guest, president of Sergio's Family Restaurants. Carlos, I remember when George McGovern, a, a left-wing senator, left the Senate and started a bed and breakfast, and it went bust. And he said, I only wish I had had some entrepreneurial experience before I had gone into politics. I would have been more mindful of the cost that, that, that uh, is put on the backs of, uh, of, of job creators, of employers, uh, when we pass these various regulations. And maybe we should make these politicians run a hot dog stand before we allow them to run for office. <laughs> I agree, and, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll make it even more of, of, of an impact in terms of, of educating not only the politicians but everyone. You know, we don't have a dialogue anymore where businesses and, and colleges and high schools talk anymore. Think about it. We have an education system that never talks to what businesses really, truly need. We live in a worldwide economy. It changes every three to four or five years. Our service industry has changed dramatically just in three to four years. But if businesses don't talk to high schools and colleges of what they need on how it, what it takes to run a business, then when these people grow up and they hear, you know, teachers telling them, no, you know, there's all this corporate money out there. Small businesses have all this money. It, it's, it's, it's a fallacy. It's not true. So obviously they come up. Politicians use that fear, use those misconceptions, and they take it to their advantage. So we need to educate the public from high school to college what it takes to run a business. So when politicians come out and say, you know, hey, we got to increase minimum wage to $20 an hour t tomorrow from, from 10, people will know and say, wait a minute. You know, that's a big jump. 
that's a big adversarial jump, and we're going to be the ones paying for this. Uh, Carlos Gazetilla is my guest. He's creator of the franchise Sergio's Fresh Cuban Cafe. Your call is coming up, 1-800-655-MIKE. That's 1-800-655-6453. And, Carlos, when I come back, I'll tell you what the New York Times used to say the correct minimum wage used to be back in 1987. It'll blow your mind. Don't leave town. And this is Larry Elder sitting in for Mike Gallagher. Our number is 1-800-655-6453. My guest is Carlos Gazatilla, Gazatua, excuse me, creator of the franchise Sergio's Fresh Cuban Cafe. Let's go quickly to Mario. Mario is in Hackensack, New Jersey. Mario, you're on with Carlos Gazatua and Larry. How you doing? Did I lose him? Hey, Mario. Let me, let me try. Mario, are you there? Mario's not there. Let me go to Thomas. Thomas is in Thomas is in New York. Thomas, Thomas, how hey, you doing? Uh, great. How are you guys? Um, Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Uh, Carlos, Mike, thanks. Uh, thanks for the call. Um, what do you call? I own a maintenance company, uh, cleaning, maintaining buildings, all, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I have thirty properties. I manage and maintain. Um, now, what Carlos said was it was interesting. The, the fifteen dollars an hour. Uh, it's going to be hard to swallow right away because basically I remember when I used to work as a young guy and I was paid, I think, seven fifty an hour as minimum wage. And uh, I was happy with that as a kid because it inspired me to do better and, and work harder to become something better. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a start to put money in my pocket as a kid. Um, the problem is, is that minimum wage now as a guy who owns a business, now I basically got to pay somebody $15 an hour where it's costing me money, it's not in my budget, it wasn't in my contracts that I have for three years going forward or four years going forward, and my contract was minimum wage. And now, to train them, uh, I have to pay $15 an hour, uh, and then if they leave me, they, they just cost me an extra 6%, 7% of my business that I basically lose because um, I have to buy 20, I think the law is going to be 2021, uh, pay, pay that. But I have to put that in my contract, and it's very difficult to swallow that, you know, so... And it's not, it's not really right. When you were, minimum wage is meant to start out and grow and become better and then move on. And, and that, that's what minimum wage jobs were. But now you're making a $15 an hour job, a permanent job for people. And now you're actually hurting the children who are looking for jobs. Now adults are taking those jobs. What's the answer to that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know what I mean? Thomas, one of the, 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 biggest, the, the biggest ways to move um, – Wages in this economy is actually, it's actually the private sector. When Walmart increased their wages to ten dollars an hour and targeted, everyone started to increase their hours because guess what? I'm competing against Walmart. If I pay you ten dollars an hour to start, I'm, I'm never, I'm never. If I pay eight dollars, nine dollars for the kitchen, no one's going to come work for me. They rather go work at Walmart and get benefits. Carlos, so, Carlos so got to run. Carlos Gazatia, go. president of Sergio's Family Restaurants. Carlos, thanks a lot for taking the time. We appreciate it.